Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Arshi and today I want to give you a new update regarding the medicine that is under trial for fighting coronavirus infection. That medicine is monoprevere. And not so many of the YouTubers wanted to make video about this because they worry of get demonetized, also their channel closed because this is a very sensitive matter. But as I promised, since I get this news and this information, I decided to share it with you and I hope YouTube also won't delete this because, because all the links that I will put in the description are legit, including the link from the Merck, uh, the company that providing uh, this medicine. So if you want to know more about the history of this medicine and its uh, structure, I will leave the link in the description because I already made a video about that. But in this video, I just want to give you an update regarding the new phases that they went through in the human trial. So if you want to know more about these drugs, don't forget to subscribe and follow me through this video. So as you all may know, Merck company failed to provide a right vaccine for fighting coronavirus infection and their vaccine failed big time. And now all of their hope is this new medicine, which they call it Monoprevere. The first trial was very successful. I already made a video regarding that. I leave the link in the description if you want to know more about that medicine and first trial result. But luckily, now there are new results that they published regarding the phase two and it's really heartwarming and it's really encouraging because by reading the first uh, trial data, I already have a high hope and luckily the second trial also going forward very well. So just to make it very clear for you, this medicine, if it becomes successful and this if is a big if because still have to go to a third trial as well as they really need to study if it can cause cancer and so which I will explain in detail in this video but if all goes well just imagine this is a very cheap drug it can be used as an oral medicine it doesn't need injection like that useless remsdevir so it's very easy uh, to export and import because it doesn't need refrigeration and it can be very fast available and reach those people who really need this medicine to fight coronavirus infection at the same time it's still not the cure it controls the virus inside your system and basically it kind of reduces the infectiousness of this virus and its transmissibility from the person who already infected to other people. So what are these data that they already published and what we can get and guess from Basically, these? they only published a phase 2a, very primary result, but it was successful. So the first thing is they work on the people who are not hospitalized. So in the category of phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, these people was at the first phase of the coronavirus infection. So after they did the PCR from all of them and confirmed they already infected, they went on the five days of trial for taking 200 milligram two times a day, 400 milligram and 800 milligram two times a day, depends on the group that they were signing. At the same time, there was placebo. So if you don't know what is placebo, placebo people already get the same kind of pills, but without any active ingredient inside to compare for statistical analysis at the end of the study. So the first objective of this study was to see the effect of the monoprevere on an active viral genome inside the people who already infected. So they get the swab from their nasal at the third day and the fifth day, and they check for the RT-PCR to see if they can detect the RNA of the virus inside their system. And Luckily, in this study, by the fifth day, those who get the lowest dosage as 200 milligram, same as the people who get 800 milligram, did not show any detectable amount of the virus genome inside their PCR. So this is very successful compared to the placebo, which already have more than 24% was positive for the detectable viral genome inside their PCR. Well, to be honest, that's a big finding. The second objective of this study, to see the infectiousness of this virus after the people receiving this medicine. And here things become a little bit complicated because the statistical analysis shows that those people who get 200 milligram of monoprevere show around 18 to 20% infectious virus inside their system, while those people who get the 800 milligram, which is the highest dosage, still could detect 34% of them uh, carrying the infectious virus inside their system. So, what is the explanation for this? Because in a logic, in the very logical way, those who received the 800 milligrams sh should have showed much less or even near to zero. And that goes back to the nature of this virus. Because when somebody gets infected, as I mentioned in the beginning, 
they were at the first phase so we cannot predict does these people get critical critically sick they need to go hospitalized or they just become symptomatic so it is possible that randomly those people who still have a very high do high amount of the infectious virus inside the system they belong to the group that supposedly should have become critical but due to the medicine they still haven't and they're recovering but they're still carrying the strong infectious virus inside the system so this could be the explanation but for that we need much more data that Merck already promised to publish very soon so this is the first important part of the study the second important part of the study is goes back to does it cause cancer or damage to our DNA because this medicine work on stopping the viral genome uh, replication inside our cell and one of my subscriber already asked could this cause cancer or not and for that Merck already conducting the non-trial study on animal and they going for the uh, PIG-A test as well as big blue test which both of these tests are very sophisticated they're really targeting the specific part of the DNA that could the drugs damage this part of the DNA and cause cancer or mutation within the cell and for this study they use animal they will uh, study tolerance of the animal toward this medicine they keep giving them the higher and higher dosage and see if they can survive or this medicine can kill them at what kind of dosage but that's very high dosage nothing comparable to what these people at the trial have received so that will be conducted and only after we receive the data from this study we can be sure that this medicine cannot cause cancer which based on my understanding from the pharmaceutical company the amount of money that right now they're spending for these trials i believe they already have the data and it doesn't cause cancer because the first important thing about this medicine is it should not kill and damage the person who using it and if it does the rest of the work they do is really good to go to the garbage so if any new data available i will share it with you please don't forget to share this with your friend and if it was uh, informative please like and subscribe and till next time i wish you all stay safe and well